Due to the limits of uh, time and scope, I will only tackle the question, is the two-state two solution is dead? My answer will be unequivocally a, a, a no. Before I present the argumentation undermining this uh, thesis that has been uh, that have been presented today by mainly by Elon, I ought to lay out the main argumentation supporting this agenda. I call it agenda, not a solution, because it's not a solution. I will, uh, the single state solution. I will do this not before reminding you that not even one serious political power or uh, on either the conflict of the conflicting sides have adopted this agenda, the agenda of one state solution, which is mainly, if not solely, advocated by some Palestinian intellectual elite and a few, very few Jewish thinkers. Same is true for the international community and especially the U.S. Uh, governments and the European powers that are treated by the conflicting, conflicting sides as the potential brokers of this elusive peace. Well, those who have buried the two-state solution usually justify this burial ceremony in what has been known as the irreversibility thesis, usually ascribed to Mirun Bendebisti. Hence, the main argument of this group, group of thinkers is mainly political, not moral. And thus, it should be tested along political parameters, not moral parameters. However, as any argument, it ought to adhere itself to main logical coherence, and thus, it ought to be examined also logically. I will focus on the argument saying that the scope and entrenchment of the Israeli occupation in the West Bank makes it rather impossible to establish a viable, sovereign, and contiguous Palestinian state that can meet the minimum aspiration of any Palestinian leadership in the foreseeable future. The impasse here is the product of both objective and political factors, meaning if there will be a political will, there will not be a way to implement it, or if there if there will be a way, there will not be uh, never a, pol a, 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 a political would never uh, there will never be a political uh, will to carry this uh, way. Apart from the obvious structuralist determinist infrastructure underlying this argument, it is, as I've already hinted, suffers from serious problematics, which justifies its treatment as a politicish approach an approach that only sounds political, but is essentially not. So, if this is truly the argument, my job here is, is far from being complicated, because if the impasse is objective, meaning that anyone who supports this argument agrees that there was a point in time that the solution was possible, but because of the increase in the number of settlers, it became impossible. Looking even closer at this argument reveals even more the absurd, as, an, as any advocate of this argument must believe that the past addition of one settler in a certain point of time in the past made the whole deal impossible. In other words, who he advocates this argument is actually saying to us that once when the number of settlers were, let, let's say, X, it was possible to execute the two-state solution. But when it became X plus one, it, become, it became impossible. Any argument of this kind should be deconstructed to reveal its true rationale. And, and it is, to, my best, to the best of my understanding, illogical. Of course, this is not to be to under, under, underestimate the harm done by the illegal, immoral Israeli settler colonial project in the West Bank uh, to the prospects of peace. The political side of the impasse is also illogical and not only problematic due to the realities on the ground. A close inspection of this argument reveals that it is based on the incorrect notion whereby a present political will, here the will to colonize the West Bank, can constrain a future political will, here the will to decolonize the West Bank. One who supports this argument cannot escape from basing this support on the belief that a certain Israeli majority existing now can constrain a certain Israeli majority which may or may not exist in the future. This argument is not only illogical, it's also undemocratic. A part of being illogical, this argument is to the best of my understanding far of being a correct and or responsible evaluation of realities on the ground. This is mainly for the following reasons, and here I will also refer to the one state agenda, 
again, I call it an agenda, as a, an alternative solution usually suggested by those who advocate the political burial of the two-state solution. First, in the foreseeable future, there is no other viable solution there is no viable solution other than the two-state solution because it is the only solution that can protect and guarantee the minimum national aspiration of both conflicting sides. It is also the only solution that enjoys international political legitimacy. And to ignore that would be, would be simply a responsible thing to do. No one can offer us, no one... I guess in the, on this table also, no one can offer us a, ro a roadmap to a single-state solution. No one can also explain to us why does he think that the Jewish Israeli will go on with it. And of course, in the absence of an effective Arab or Palestinian battalions prepared to impose this solution, to regard any solution as a realistic and worth promoting, must meet the grievous and minimum political aspiration of each conflicting sides. Going back to the logical problems, advocates of the single state usually justify their position by arguing that Israel cannot and will not evacuate settlers or relinquish its matrix of control over the West Bank and Gaza, Gaza, Gaza being under, still being under effective Israeli control, which account for 22% of historical Palestine. If so, and it's, it's if, if so, why do you think that Israel can be forced or convinced to do, to do so at the, uh, to the whole area under its control? It is not only unrealistic according to the political standards mentioned above, it is also illogical. To conclude, the two-state solution will remain alive as long as there is at least a slight majority in both sides who support it or at least willing to live with it. It, ev it even cannot die if these majorities shrink into large minorities, as it will survive as a solution out of political repertoire of several realistic solutions. It certainly should not be announced dead based on illogical or pseudo-political arguments, let alone without offering a viable realistic alternative. Doing so should be justly treated as an abuse of intellectual influence and a lack of moral, res moral responsibility. And I say that without questioning the good intent of the people advocating this, th this thesis. Thank you.